So thank you for having me. Um, so as Armin said, I design typefaces. Um, as someone who designs fonts, we are on the raw materials end of the branding business. Uh, I'm going to let the other speakers, Paula Scher is here, Ivan Shemayev is here, talk about what makes a good brand typographically. But as a company that's worked with some of the best designers in the world and has furnished the fonts for some of the best brands in the world, we have an unusual perspective on the role that typography plays in branding. And uh, Armin asked me to speak about how typography plays a role in building brands, and that's what I'd like to discuss today. So people know us as a company that designs fonts, and that's principally what we do. I mean, I, I founded this company 26 years ago so that I could design typefaces. But a better description might be that we're a company that not only invents typefaces, but provides them to designers, to designers' clients, uh, to anybody responsible for shepherding a brand through from an idea to its final completion. Uh, this is our team, or at least the 17 of them that showed up for photo day. There are 21 of us all in. All in. Um, Brian and Reed and Romeo are here somewhere. If you see them, please say hello. And we're pretty evenly divided at the company between those involved in design, those involved in technology, and those on the business side, with some overlaps. Collectively, we provide fonts to designers and to designers' clients and to the businesses that support these clients, which is a pretty big web of people. As you might experience design as somebody who creates brands, a relationship might be between you, this is you, uh, and your client, who's very well dressed, um, and you might work with a client to create an identity and work with some of their key staff, uh, in-house creative product owners, maybe strategists. When a type foundry such as mine joins the picture, we end up working not just with you and your client and your client staff, but people deeper in the organization. Uh, we'll have conversations with people in purchasing and asset management. Uh, we'll field requests from designers further down in the organization, anybody who works with the fonts to execute the brand guidelines. And we work with people in legal and finance to provide font licenses for new purposes. We work with departments even further afield, like people involved in special projects and promotions, and web developers and app developers and engineers who build the things that need to express the brand. And this is just inside your client's company. On the outside, we work with your client's other agencies and other vendors. Uh, creative suppliers, vendors, printers, fabricators, outside tech contractors like web developers and app developers, and your client's affiliates and licensees who create the work that in some way touches the brand. The kinds of interactions that my company has had with these sorts of people over the last two and a half decades gives us a kind of strange perspective into how brand typography develops. And it's the very fact that brand typography does develop that makes it so important. Oh, thank you very much that makes it so important to recognize its significance, especially in comparison to the logo. Um, this arrived just in time. I think we should have a drinking game this conference. Whenever the Google logo is mentioned, we should just have a swig. <laughs> Although with the bathroom situation, maybe that's not the best, uh, best thing to do. <clears throat> Every time a major organization rebrands, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a big public foo about the quality of the logo. Um, I try to steer clear of these conversations. Um, first of all, they're kind of rude to the guys that made the logo, whether you like it or not. But I think they're also dangerous because they reinforce a public misconception that the logo is the identity. This is the, lo the Google logo in a vacuum, where it's very easy to criticize. But here it is in sight. Uh, this is Google's privacy page, and the new logo is in the upper left corner. In sheer real estate alone, the logo is the most insignificant part of the branding for this document. Nearly everything on the page isn't the logo, most of it's typography. Typography that's presumably shaped by the brand guidelines, the standards that go far beyond the logo itself. But this logo occupies less than one half of one percent of the screen. Ninety-nine and a half percent of what's there is typography. Um, and I think that focusing the commentary on the logo leads the public, and the public include all of our clients, by the way, to conclude that the identity is the logo. And that does a disservice to what we as designers do. It's like allowing people to think that design is what it looks like, when design is really what it is. Design is how it works. 